I'm uh, in Wangaratta Shire Council offices with Emma Keith, the Tourism Development Officer. We're talking about digital engagement, the digital economy, and in particular what the tourism sector are doing. Um, and it appears you guys are doing a really good job with the use of social media in, the, in uh, Council itself at the moment. Tell us a little bit, bit about what you're doing, the performing arts and the art galleries and places like that. Most definitely. So I guess the Rural City of Rangaratta really understands the importance of social media and the digital platforms that are available yeah. today. Uh, what we've tried to do is ensure that our key council facilities, such as the Wangaratta Art Gallery, the Wangaratta Performing Arts Centre, and of course the Wangaratta Visitor Information Centre, all have active social media platforms that they play within. So the Visitor Information Centre, for example, has a YouTube channel has their walking tours on TripAdvisor, has a very active and engaging uh, Facebook platform, is also dabbling in Twitter and Pinterest, and is now looking at moving forward into the blogging space as well and creating a blogging identity which talks about what our favourite things in our own backyard are and yep. I guess communicating that out. The Performing Arts Centre are doing a wonderful job. They have about 900 followers on Facebook yep. and they've really taken, I guess, a very personal personable, I should say, profile on that. So they're really sharing the behind the scenes at the Performing Arts Centre. It's yep. been a great promotional tool for them. The Wangaratta Art Gallery is just beginning to play in this space and they're utilising it as a tool to really um, showcase and not necessarily broadcast but communicate to a very specific segment about the art gallery and the different exhibitions that they have yep. playing at the moment. Uh, the Murray to Mountains Rail Trail, which of course we play a large part in, is also working quite well in the social media space, so through uh, TripAdvisor, Twitter and also Facebook as well. Yeah, and some of the wineries, we talked about some of the wineries, they're doing some good stuff on Twitter, is that right? Most definitely. So our wine industry is really quite advanced in this space, I, I feel. They do a fantastic job and a few of those that are really working well with Twitter are Del Zotto's, Pizzini's and Brown Brothers specifically. Yeah. I guess with the King Valley Prosecco Road, which is such a key product focus for us, they're embracing social media to to share the story and to get people more involved so that when they come to the King Valley or they come to Wangratta, they feel like they're already part of that conversation. They, yeah. they feel like they know the people behind the, the cellar door. So they're actually selling on um, using Twitter to sell, are they? Their sales they are increasing are. as a result? So I, I think it's something that's um, becoming a bit of a, a normal, I shouldn't say a norm, but it's a bit of a trend within the wine industry that Twitter is something that they're able to utilise to really direct sales as well. So there are reports that people are actually receiving direct business to business sales via, via Twitter. So um, it, it's also in the wholesale market as well. They, they will get a tweet saying, you know, I need another box of Prosecco Christian or something like that. And I guess it's another sales tool for them. Yeah. Now, of course, there's some businesses that are doing a really good job and then there's others that are lagging behind probably because they don't have maybe the skills or the time. What, what do you perceive as the, the things that are holding businesses back from getting involved and, and what can we do about it? I think training is certainly something that um, is integral to, to driving businesses to feel confident to be in the social media or, or digital space, whether it be websites or, or social media. Um, it's certainly something that is lacking at the moment is that, um, that confidence and I think training one-on-one, -on -one, whether it be mentoring or physically them sitting at a computer and learning how to create a profile, post pictures, post comments, write comments, um, et cetera, et cetera, on the different platforms would, would I guess, really lift um, their confidence. At the moment, um, there are a lot of people out there who feel that it's going to be um, really time-consuming and for that reason they've kind of put it to the side as though it's not important. However, it is so important, I guess, to communicate that importance to them yep. as part of our role, but certainly the training aspect of it is where we need to go to ensure that they build that confidence to, to yep. take it on as their own. And do businesses, do you think they're generally aware that the, you know, the NBN has been rolled out and this digital economy, high-speed broadband is on its way, and of course that's just going to accelerate everything that we've already talked about in this interview? I believe that there's some businesses that are aware of it. I mean, of course, it has been through various um, media outlets and I'm sure they've heard of it. However, I'm not sure that they understand 
just how much it's going to impact on their business and because of the rollout, just how important it is for them to embrace social media and technology itself. Yeah, a couple of things that we did discuss that we shouldn't leave out. Uh, video is obviously going to become more and more important as people get bandwidth. Tell us what you're doing with YouTube. So I guess what we're planning on doing over the next 12 months is to create, create some user-generated content, which is, I guess it gives a, a level of trust as well. It doesn't look like it's something that's been developed at a corporate level. So we're looking at uh, getting people to create a 90-second uh, video grab about the best things that they that they feel, all the things that they feel are the best in their own backyard. And I guess it's that sharing um, community, uh, I'm not really quite sure what the way the right user generated is. content yeah. yeah yeah definitely so that it's not us telling people but it's other people telling the story for us yes which is really what it, this is all about it's not just been it's not controlled by one central that's right area. it's people who are you know who know the place that they love the best that should be telling people about it very much so um, the final thing is data so we had a great example of using Google uh, Facebook ads and been able to measure what was effective and what wasn't you know, what wasn't effective tell us a little bit about that no worries so we uh, first I guess dipped our toe into the the Facebook advertising scene earlier on in 2012 we used the nab cup in Wangaratta and also a new product for us King Valley Prosecco Road to try and drive visitation to a series of events that we held over that long weekend um, we created a series of different adverts utilising different imagery to inspire and motivate different, um, different people. We didn't narrow down the demographics too finely. We did, however, specifically seek out people from Melbourne and regional New South Wales yep. to, I guess, see these within their feeds. The click rate that we had for those imagery, the imagery that we used that was really destinational focused and not generic, was really um, captivating and it, it really did generate the clicks for us. Yeah. We had to increase our budget that we that we had set aside for the clicks yeah. as obviously there is a fee for every click. And a few of the operators such as Brown Brothers actually sold out on the weekend. So I guess it's proof in the pudding when um, you do limited other advertising and you focus your efforts in one stream and you still see it sell yeah. out. I think the other thing is that so many people don't realise that when you use these tools that you've got the data that tells you exactly what's working and what's not working and of course the old adage that 50% of your advertising is wasted but you don't know which 50% really no longer applies. Yeah that's right and I guess with the statistics that are now available with these different platforms but most specifically talking about Facebook it really does give you a lot of insight into who your demographic are, where mm. they're coming from, how old they are and what other interests they have. So. For us, that's been really valuable, and I guess we've trialled a few different things through Facebook as to different types of images that we'll use, and I believe if, it, if it's an image of a, a woman, you actually get a lot more likes and clicks and whatnot, even from its, even if it's a male or female person that's actually viewing the image. So we've tried different types of things to try mm. and boost the engagement levels, and um, we're having quite quite a good lot of success. Great. Look, on that note, we'll um, I think we'll sign off, but thanks a million. No worries.